الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى لسيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى لإبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا The crux of this surah is Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a lot of indication that towards the end of times the biggest attack that is going to be made is not so much on the men, it's going to be on the women. Not so much on the older but on the younger. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about the time where a father will lock up his wife and his daughter knowing that at night, sometime in the night, they're going to try to escape and go over to the jal. What is that surat of that going to be? It's something we can't understand. But you think like the father, the husband is worried about his family. So he's performing his salah. Normally you'll think about a daughter, the daughter is wild. But his own wife, imagine the time comes where that man doesn't know what his wife is doing. But are, are we already seeing a time like that? That sometimes the man wakes up at night, first thing he decides to do, let me see my wife's phone. And when he sees it, he says, it's the biggest mistake I made, I should not have seen it. And then he asks, how could you do what you did? Because like a woman is so innocent, a woman is so simple, a woman is so modest. But when Allah's Nabi Wasallam said, the time will come where the husband will know when he's sleeping, not his daughter will run out, his wife will want to run. So it means the time is, we are heading for a time where it might get even worse than what we are seeing now. Perhaps a hundred or hundred and fifty years ago when the women's movement started in the world, they call it women's liberation, women's rights. Then that one emblem that they use, so someone wrote about this, that, that emblem that's called the emblem of women's liberation, women's rights, bring women out of the house. They said that stick, which is their emblem, is the exact same stick. They even gave it the name. They even said that this is this. That same name they used. They said this is the exact stick which you will find if you have to go to Egypt. And in Egypt, if you have to visit the pyramids. And at the pyramids, you will see this one shaitani figure. That in front of him, the pharaohs are also like making sajda. Then that shaitani figure, that stick that he's holding... In that era, when the Women's League liberation started, for the emblem they used that stick. To show that this is the movement that how the Pharaoh also submitted to the devil. This is the movement where the woman of the world will be brought at the feet of the devil. But they had to do it in such an educating, such a nice, such an entertaining manner. That a girl is normally simple. A woman is not evil. No woman is by nature zania. No woman is by nature a sarika, a thief. Men do that. That's why in Quran Allah said, Azzaniya tu azzani. Starting with azzaniya. That a woman who does adultery. Meaning can you have something like that? A woman's nature is supposed to be clean. But if something happens to the nature of the woman, we always said that the madrasa of the children is the house. So the man, even if he's naughty, but the mother will tell the children, don't listen to your father. Just keep his nonsense outside. What happens if the mother is full of nonsense? What happens if the mother is full of nonsense? Then forget the child when he grows up to the age of seven and eight, introduced to dirt and filth. That child is introduced to dirt and filth with his own mother. We entered an era today where sometimes the mother is on drugs. Because of her taking her drug, it's having an effect in the milk of the mother. That child is becoming an addict of drugs just by drinking the mother's milk. The child is craving for something. So the person at the rehab is saying to the mother, you destroyed your life. That I can understand, but why did you do it to the child? The child never even saw the world. 
So in this surah, surah Tahreem, the real address is for the women and the girls of the ummah. And the men, we will have to take the lesson like sideline. But because it's in the masjid given, you will have to take this message back home. But first it has to come in our mind. That that freedom which the world said it's offering, or America said it's offering to my daughter, to my mother, to my sister. Is it really a freedom? Is it really something I want my daughter to get? Because we always told our children when someone offers you the box of chocolates, don't look at the box, look at the man giving the chocolate. He could be out to kidnap you. But had it come to the stage where today when my and your daughter is offered something, then we say to her, don't look at who's offering, just look at what's being offered. And just take that, but don't worry who's giving it. For which reason, recent time, and one unique example, we say it's a wake-up call for all of us. What education can do to the mind of the pure? In the world, you will say those that are the furthest from what is called civilization, they call it civilization, we call it the first world countries. Those countries which are the furthest from what is called first world countries, when you enter those countries, you will find perhaps even the smartphone never reached there. But you will also find adultery and drugs also never reached there. You will find they so pure in those countries that today when we speak of porn, the young six-year-old boy he already knows what we're talking about. But in those countries, the person who's 30 years old also asks, what's that? The further you are from civilization, the purer you are. Because the devil could not bring his poison through his televisions far away. But now you take a country like Afghanistan. How far they were from civilization for so many years. They went war after war. Russia came, they tried to bring in their own impression. And they fought against them. But Russia never had the time to put up schools. Because the war was just carrying on. Whoever they could make atheist in nature, it was a small group. England came in, they hardly managed to do anything. But when America came, the majority of Afghanistan, they couldn't do anything. Those who know Afghanistan will understand that besides about seven cities in Afghanistan, the rest of Afghanistan for the last 15 years hardly saw any Americans. America had a certain spot. They would not go beyond that spot. Because they knew you just go beyond the spot, the bomb falls immediately. They remained in their square. That is why they called for the truce. Nobody else called them. When they were getting too tight, how long they were going to remain in that Qabristan? They the ones who called. Where you will think that man breaks his pride. But in those seven cities, during the last 20 years, when they put up their universities and their schools, whoever came through that school was once upon a time the innocent mother of Afghanistan. Just 20 years ago, she was the sister of a fighter for Islam. Or she was the mother of a fighter for Islam. When they entered, whoever they saw is resisting, they got rid of them in the cities. There was a lot of torture, a lot of killing. And wherever they found a young, innocent child, that child they never needed to torture. That child they just had to enter into their system. Why are we saying this? It's a wake-up call. That our children also go to the same schools and universities which that woman now went through. Twenty years ago, that woman was the one lifting up the weapon against Russia against England, and at the beginning against the American forces. And she said, my deen, my religion is everything, my life doesn't matter. And that was called, you are the warrior of Islam, which will come at the end of the surah. That you will get some people who could be the wife of Fir'aun also, but she was Asya, beautiful in nature. But then that school environment was so strong, 
that in 20 years that girl who went, what we saw in the news after Afghanistan, whatever happened, happened recently. Everything wasn't a lie. What was a lie is the reporters never go to the 75% of Afghanistan. Had they gone there, they would have seen every woman who is very happy to be a Muslimah. This is my life, this is. We were walking one time when 911 took place, just after that the news was making a very big scene about it. So I was in one shopping area, me and my family, my wife, and one white woman walked past. So in front of everyone, she started making a scene that how can you do this to her? You're so oppressive. So few people turned around. So my wife said that I have been wearing this before marriage also. And like that old white woman, she like looked like shocked. And then what she's going to say? She said, then your father brainwashed you. Then your father brainwashed you. Meaning if you're happy to be a Muslim, it means you're brainwashed. If you're not happy to be a Muslim, now it means that your mind is now clear. That wording that they put, where it's supposed to be either you're happy to be the slave of Allah, or you're happy to be the slave of the devil. In the ending, you are going to listen to someone. That girl 20 years ago never wanted to do what they told her to do. But 20 years they put her in that system. And when the Taliban took over and in the world people celebrated that we are now seeing the beginning of an Islamic revolution. And it's something to be very happy about. You'll only not be happy about it if you follow the news. Why the world, the western world is so shivering so much. The Taliban already told them we're not coming to fight you. Where are we going to go fight? To reach America, they don't even have that weapon that what you call, now they got helicopters. Aeroplanes they're trying to get, they don't have those jets they can fly, that's it. Those people can fly here. They don't have those huge bombs we can come and bomb a country. Why then is the West so scared of the rising of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan? Because you can lie through the news how much you can lie. But if a person goes on the ground and he sees a practical world, he will say, what I was reading in the news is the difference between heaven and earth. I entered here and I found women are happy, girls are happy, people are happy, children are happy. Just the other day one reporter went in Afghanistan, so taking the report, so now they told her that you want to take a report, there's also places outside the city. So let's enter. So the reporter had to go now. So now you meet, you go in on family. So the old mother, she said, I want to talk. Very old woman, she came with a burqa. And she sat down and she told the reporter that what those girls that side are saying, they want freedom, freedom. She said, that's not us. He said, we made dua for so many years for the coming back of Islam. He said, that's us. So now the reporter has to report on this, isn't it? So what a nice sentence the reporter wrote. You can understand what a liar they are. Like. The reporter said, but although she said this, I'm sure she was scared about those three soldiers who were behind me. She was scared. The other side, they won't say that. But they can't accept that anyone says, I'm happy to be a Muslim. For them, it doesn't make sense. But then you ask them in the world when a lockdown took place and everyone was told stay at home, no one come out. Why was it at that time that some people were itching to come to the masjid? Was guns put by their head to say go to the masjid? It was some people who said my religion means more to me than everything whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. Even if it means I must die for my religion, I'll die. That they can never understand. But to wake up to the reality of what a school can do to the mind of an innocent girl. It can take her to such an extent that she can become upset with Almighty Allah. And she can say, why is Islam taking away my rights? Whereas her word supposed to be is, I have been created for my Allah. This surah was to address the girl. 
But in what manner when you want to shout your daughter? Hardest thing to do. Shout your wife, you don't even think of doing it. You won't have supper the next day. But your daughter, it's hard, but she look at you and says, but daddy, and you melt. Almighty Allah in the surah, what a unique method was taken to warn the woman of this ummah. Majority of the Quran, men were warned. And sideline, the women were told, get the message also. Majority of Quran, men were warned. And in morning, men, Almighty Allah used the example of the Jew and the Christian. So Allah will say, don't be like the Jews, but telling the Muslims, don't behave like that. He says, look at the Jews and how Allah's curse came. Look at the Christian, what they did. O oh, people of Iman, don't do this. Women were never shouted. When the time came to shout woman, Almighty Allah used the example of the best of this ummas to women. Aisha radiallahu anha, Hafsa radiallahu anha, the daughter of Abu Bakr as Siddiq, and she is called Siddiqa radiallahu anha. Umar radiallahu's daughter Hafsa radiallahu anha, sister of Abdullah bin Umar. The beloveds of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the mothers of the ummah. But the shouting had to be so unique that the daughter won't even know I'm getting shouting. She will just feel bad or sorry for Aisha radiallahu anha. It's like in your house you want to get a message to your daughter. Then you tell your wife tomorrow we'll put up a scene. And me and you start arguing and I'll stand up and say, you know who's the boss here? And finally say, okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Their daughter will just go, chup. Next day when you tell her, what you want? No, nothing. It'll never happen, but isn't it? Way our wife will allow us to do that. You say, you know who's the boss here? You won't say it again in your life. But if you ever wanted to. Allah Tawarukullah is going to now in the first ruku reprimand the wives of Rasulullah Sallallahu but the purpose was not them. That's why the next two pages was going to show what the purpose was. That, oh, woman of this world, if you want to, you can be, because there was Lut alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam. What two great anbiya. But in both their houses, Allah made it such that from their wives, one wife of each desired to be from the people of Kufr. In the house of the Nabi, Allah Taala said, "Falam yughniya anhum amin Allah shayya." Their husbands could not help them at all against Allah, because they never want to be of the people of Iman. And then I said, Allah said, "Then look at the wife of Firaun. That if you say environment, then in the house of the Nabi, the one who never wanted was kicked out of Islam." And in the house of the Pharaoh, the one who wanted Allah was given Jannah. The purpose of this two incidents that are going to be mentioned, but I want you to enjoy the Arabic, the beauty of Quran. When Allah Taala takes the wives of Rasulullah Sallallahu to task, and then He says to them that don't ever think that there is no one who can take your place. Because if Allah wants to, He'll remove you and put somebody else. The message wasn't given to them. The message was given to our wives and daughters. Don't think Islam depends on you. There's a lot in the world who are out of Islam at the moment. But if Allah wants and they enter, and it's already happening, in the countries like France, Europe, the women who are putting on the full niqab are those who accepted Islam. So you'll have, and examples have come, at the restaurant, a woman goes to buy something. So the cashier who's sitting there is either from one of the Arab lands, could be Dubai or could be Syria. Now Syria is changing, but at that time, those that went over, they became European. So they look more European than the European. The amount of lipsticks they put on the lipstick market makes all their money because of them. There's more lipstick than lip. So they're sitting there as the captain cashier and the woman with niqab comes. There's a law that says whenever someone makes you feel shy, you become more upset. So you will see a non-Muslim sometimes doesn't shout a woman in niqab. But another Muslima will shout her. The reason is that Muslima is feeling shy. 
that why am I not in the niqab? So to defend herself, she will go out of her way to say, this is wrong. For which reason he said, if we weak, be weak. But don't ever try to prove you strong. That's not fair. If you weak, you weak. But don't ever try to prove, no, I am strong and the strong one is weak. So she was a cashier, one of these Arab girls, and a woman in niqab came. And she was buying something, so the cashier said to her, that this is Europe. This, you take it back to your country. We don't need this in our country. So the woman wearing the niqab never understood, so she lifted her niqab, and she was a European woman. She says, Madam, I don't understand. Like, where am I supposed to go? Because she thought she's maybe from one of the Muslim lands. She said, where am I supposed to go? Then she said, Madam, we bought your Islam and you sold your Islam. She said, we bought it. That in Europe when we found Islam, this was what we were dreaming of from years. Something to take out, out of the rat race. Every morning I wake up, I must put on more makeup than face. It's a thing, and maybe our wives and daughters need to understand it now. Follow the West in their system, but the end of their system is marriage don't work. It can't work. Because every door of theirs leads to nowhere. One reason is, they beautify themselves so much, that they don't look who they are. With that amount of makeup when they go out, they look so pretty, that if their husband or boyfriend has to see them outside, husband, he will say, hey, you are a smart chick, who are you? Say, I'm your wife. Oh, sorry. But let her come home. At home, that makeup can't stay during the night. So what happened with the system of makeup is she became ugly for her husband and smart for the world. How will he manage to live with someone ugly? And every day when she puts it up, it makes her more ugly. There's a whole thing now at the moment, like looking at those who put on makeup 40 years ago. And what happened to them 40 years later? It will affect the entire bodies that you're not normal anymore. So you will have to, poor husband, that's why the husband say, I just make sabr for the whore of Jannah. I heard she doesn't get these wrinkles. But those wrinkles were brought. What brought it, that system about be smart for the world? But they never added, but unfortunately you will have to lose your beauty for your husband. And the husband also, he wanted her to be smart. But when they found the niqab, suddenly even that European woman said, what I searched for for years, that there is time when I want to go outside. But why must I make sure when I go out, everyone in the world must see me as Miss Universe? There must be no wrinkle, there must be no line, there must be no dot. Going out becomes a musibah. Just pap, 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 pap. That's only one door of this. How many doors they got? In the era of Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, certain matters would happen. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a lot of wives. And when you have a lot of wives, amongst wives, you're going to get incidents. If the incident had to do with Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his wife, Almighty Allah would never have mentioned it in Quran for the world. Because it was a matter wrapped up at home. As I told you, the purpose was to give a warning to the woman of the world. That remember, Almighty Allah is Allah. Even if you are the Aisha of the era, Almighty Allah can take you to task. It was a unique method. There are certain factions in the world at the moment, among the Shia, there are many of them, who always try to say Abu Bakr and Umar, radiallahu anhuma. They went out of the way to change this Quran. This is a miracle, this. No Nabi ever could change Quran, no follower of any Nabi. Russia, America, Britain, the world could not. But for them, they want to believe that Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhumah changed. 
So an alim wrote very nicely, if they wanted to change anything, the first surah they would have pulled out of Quran is this surah. Because in this surah, it was the daughters of both those who were reprimanded. Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu said, I needed to know really the details. Because this you call like a personal matter. He says, I needed to know the details of what happened here. But everyone was like, we're not getting involved in this. He said, Umar radiallahu anh would know the best because it was his daughter. But every time I wanted to ask him, I'm thinking that, like if I ask him, you know, like what happened here? Your daughter, what she did? He said, after one year I took the courage to say that this verse of Quran, like what happened? Not even telling him, I know it got to do with your daughter. And he said, how Umar radiallahu anh sat with him and explained the whole thing. Sahaba radiallahu anhum were not shy. But the issue was not a personal issue. The issue was telling the woman of the world, understand that you, as they were the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what an honor. You are the daughters of the ummah, what an honor. But when you enter in the house of Islam, don't take it for granted. Because Islam doesn't need anyone. It can take Fir'aun's wife and bring her in. And it can take Nabi Nuh alayhi salam's wife and push out. This is Islam. And it is something very worrying. And as we reading this, all of us in our heart, we make this dua and everyone listening. Allah make our daughters and our mothers like Asiya. That she never needed the environment from outside. She said, I want in, even if it meant she was going to lose her life. She lost her palace, she lost her luxury. Firaun said to her, finally I'll give you everything back. Just leave this religion. They were hitting her and hitting her and hitting her. But she was a princess, she was the most beloved of the wives of the Pharaoh. What she never had, what she gave up just for Allah. And how she died with a smile. She said, Allah build for me by you my palace. And she smiled because Almighty Allah showed her the palace. So in the era of Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, two incidents happened. Many could have happened, but in the surah Allah mentioned two. And then he took the wives to task. But the message was to the world. One was where you have something called a slave girl. <clears throat> the king of Alexandria, what we say today, Egypt. So one part of Egypt at that time, Alexandria was separate. The king of Alexandria sent a slave girl to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Maria Qibtiya radiallahu anha. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept her in Kuba and then he would go now and then to go and visit her. But she never ever came. And there was no way for her to come because each wife of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had their own house. It was their house and Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then would rotate among the houses. One time it happened, Maria Qibtiya radiallahu anha came and Hafsa radiallahu anha, Umar radiallahu's daughter was out. She had perhaps gone to visit someone and she was not there. So the house was empty. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, knowing the house was empty, took Maria Qibtiya radiallahu anha to the house of Hafsa radiallahu anha. If you can understand how houses were like in that time, not like ours. The houses were all next to each other. So it was known now that he's taking the other wife will know that Hafsa radiallahu anha is not here. Maria Qibtiya is coming. They're going in the house. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa spent time with his wife. When Hafsa radiallahu anha came back, and this is a woman, even if your wife allows you to marry another woman, but don't you dare tell her that you know this holiday you're going to visit your mother, you'll mind if she comes here. Over my dead body. This was their nature. They were used to more wives. But they had this thing, but not in my house. Aisha radiallahu anha, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was just before passing away, that was the one time he wasn't giving her attention. Because he was in extreme pain. So she noticed few times he walked past. Now he's not coming to speak to her. He's just carrying on. So she told her khadima that put a bandage on my head. This was Aisha radiallahu anha. She was unique in getting the attention of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Put a bandage on my head. And then she sat there and as Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa walked by, she said, ah, oh, my head. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa came in and said, what? She said, my head is paining. 
Nabi Sallallahu laughed. And he said, if only you know how my head is paining. He said, only then she understood that. He said, within three or four days, then he was brought to her house. And then the final sickness started, which lasted for many days. But during when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi entered and he said, if only you know how my head is paining, he also then laughed with her. How he would laugh with his wife? He laughed and he said, why are you worried about headaches? He said, you don't have to worry. If you have to pass away, I will make your janaza. And I will make dua for you. He said, but if I pass away, you will be left without a husband. So Aisha radiallahu anha said, if you pass away, how I will cry. But if I pass away before you pass away, I'm sure you will go marry another woman and bring her in my house. I'll never allow that. Even that, I won't allow it. So to come in the house was very hard. You can go in another house, no problem. Not my house. Hafsa radiallahu anha was very upset. She said to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you brought her, you got so many wives. Am I the most like low in your eyes that in my house? It wasn't that, it was you not here. But a wife when she talks, she talks like that. How could you do this to me? Like, in my house. So Nabi Sallallahu would never get angry with his wives. So he said, okay, okay, just let's leave it now. And then he said, I promise you after today, I will not even sleep with Maria Qibtiya again. Meaning maybe I let her go. Or, now, don't just leave it now. And now, a woman, a woman, then she'll go immediately where he came. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu, lima tuharrimu ma ahalla Allahu lak. O Allah's nabi, why have you made haram what Allah made halal for you? Tabtaghi mardata azwajik. Are you searching for the happiness of your wives? Don't ever do this. Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. Allah is most forgiving, meaning forgiven. But don't do it. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to give kafara. Qad farad Allahu lakum. Allah has made it farz upon you. That that qasam you took, go break the qasam. The oath that you took. Hafsa radiallahu anha was now not going to stop him. He took an oath, I will not sleep with her. He had to break that oath, meaning a command came, go now and sleep with her. قَدْ فَرَدَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ تَحِلَّةَ إِيمَانِكُمْ Allah has made it farz upon you, go and break your qasam. Then give the kafara for the qasam. وَاللَّهُ مَوْلَاكُمْ Allah is mawla, got lot meanings. One meaning is like the main main. The master of the slave is called the mawla. And when the master talks, the slave is told, listen. وَاللَّهُ مَوْلَاكُمْ Allah is the master. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Allah knows everything. Allah is most wise. Immediately the wives had to go. That even in your own house, it's not your house, it belongs to Allah. Even in your own house, when you say, how dare you could do this to me? It was told, it's not yours, everything belongs to Allah. So when that girl, she goes through a system of education, and then she says, why is my privacy being evaded? Why can't I do what I want? We have found the time now. Allah, save our daughters. It's happening with the non-Muslims, but so fast it's coming into the Muslims. Where the young girl wants to know in madrasa, what is wrong with me having a girlfriend? Ten years ago, the Morana or the Apa would say, you can't have a boyfriend. And she was saying, why not? But what a time we entered where she wants to know, why can't I have a girlfriend? The first part was no privacy, it's not yours. Your body also belongs to Allah. If Allah said you can go in this direction, then go. Otherwise, if you want the devil's road, but you'll have to walk behind the devil right to the fire. It doesn't stop before that. Another incident that happened. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after Asr Salah used to go to visit his wives and spend little time, little time, little time. At night, each one would get one night. So it would rotate the nights. But after Asr, each one would get a little time, little time. And every wife wanted to somehow have one question. Like, 
So Aisha radiallahu anha will keep a question. So Nabi is saying, one question. So one question means you have to give an answer. You can't just say, salam, everything's okay. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she was the most, she was the most beautiful, most beloved, but she was the most competitive also. She could not see anyone taking Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyone. So she would count the minutes like. So one time she picked up by Zainab radiallahu anha, who was the cousin of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a wife. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was spending a little extra time more than normal. And the houses were all nearby. So she went as to investigate that what's the issue now? What question she got? And she found out that Zainab radiallahu anha had just got some honey. So when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi loved honey, he would come, she would say, Allah is Nabi honey. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi would say, why not? And she would quickly go to make like a drink, a honey drink. As she's making the drink, then she has to talk. And then Nabi Sallallahu will drink it and then, Assalamu Alaikum. Now Aisha radiallahu anha wants to know how to stop the honey story. You can't wait for the whole jar to get finished. So she says to Hafsa and Soda radiallahu anha that this was their house. This was used to happen and it was a laughing matter. It came in Quran, not for the issue. It came in Quran for the message. So she told Hafsa and Sauda radiallahu anha, help me out in this. They were not going to get much out of it because they used to all get, she, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha, should get the most of time. But when she is asked, so there were no problem. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi will come, then you must just ask him that perhaps did you eat from that certain one thing? There was something there, maghafir, which never have like the best of smell. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was very particular when he came to his wives. He always made miswak before coming to them. He never ever wanted any of them to smell anything of a bad odor. What a pure he was. But even the food smell must not trouble my wives. So he said, just say to him, did you eat from this mahafir? And then he will say, no, I only had honey. So then you must say, oh no, maybe the bee ate from that. And the honey was made from that, from the bee. So the first wife said, some said, no, said, maybe, maybe it's the bee, oh, nothing to worry about. Maybe the bee ate from there. And that's how you got the honey. Then when he went to Hafsa radiallahu anha, she said the same thing. And when he came to Aisha radiallahu anha, and she said the same thing. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I will not have this honey. Because this honey is giving this, this, this odor. He never make it haram, but he said, I won't have it. But now he said, but don't ever let Zainab radiallahu anha find out. Because her heart will break like that her honey is giving a bad smell. So I will just go to her and I say, no, I'm not like in the mood. And then she would, they, nature was, they would give it away in charity. Once Nabi Sallallahu was not having anything, they wouldn't keep it like we keep it for 20 years. It would go out immediately. He said, don't let her find out. But woman are woman. Aisha radiallahu anha was so happy now because the next day Nabi Sallallahu time by Zainab radiallahu anha was shorter. Because he just told her no. She said no, no problem. And then salam alaikum. As soon as he left, she told Hafsa radiallahu anha, plan worked. The work is done. She only told Hafsa radiallahu anha, but Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi told her, don't tell anyone that I'm not going to have honey. And she told Hafsa radiallahu anha, and it was natural, Zainab radiallahu anha got a shock. Because the next, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa came, you want honey? No. Suddenly, no honey. So she was obviously going to investigate also. And it was definite that very soon, her party would get the story, and she would get the message that the honey is not smelling nice, and her heart will break. So immediately, Wahi came to sort out the matter. How it came. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Aisha radiallahu anha and he told her, why did you tell? So she immediately, she said, I only told Hafsa. So she said, how you know I told? She said, Hafsa must have told. She spied me out. So obviously you're going to fight with Hafsa now. So there Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to say that there's also an Allah. You know? I don't need Hafsa telling me. There's also an Allah. Beautiful Quran, but وَإِذْ أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ أَزْوَاجِهِ حَدِيثًا Speaking to the wives. And look how ambiguous Quran is. How ambiguous. And in ambiguity there's beauty. Speaking to the wives, to the two especially, Aisha radiallahu anha, Hafsa radiallahu anha. And remember when the Nabi of Allah, 
he mentioned a secret to one of his wives. فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَتْ بِهِ But when she could not keep the secret, وَأَظْهَرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ And when Allah informed him about it, أَرَّفَ بَعْضَهُ وَأَعْرَضَ عَنْ بَعْضِ Then he made indication to her about a little. But majority he just like, he never go home angry like how we will go and say, I told you don't tell. He said, why did you tell? And But majority he like, he just forgot about it. He only made a slight indication. But that also made her angry. Because did that one spy about me? فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَهَا بِهِ When he informed her about it, that why did you give the secret? Call it. Then she said, look at the beauty of Quran. Almighty Allah will not even speak to Aisha radiallahu anha, Kulta, you said, Kulti, you said. Oh, let remember she said, that one wife, she said, Man anba'aka hadha, that I want to know who told you. Did she tell you that? Because I told her not to tell you. <laughs> That's how secrets are, isn't it? I told her, but you also gave the secret, I told her not to tell you. And then Nabi Sallallahu said, Qala, Nabba'ani al-alimu al-khabir. That one who knows everything, he's the one who informed me. In tatuba ila Allah, now comes the shouting. To the two wives of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah, our lives be sacrificed for them. They took a shouting on behalf of the whole ummah. In tatuba ila Allah, if you all repent to Allah, then very good. فَقَدْ صَغَتْ قُلُوبُكُمَا Because the hearts of the two of you all did go little bit off. Like. It's not called astray. It means you're not behaving so well. You shouldn't have done something. Look at the words. But that your heart has started like going off track. وَإِن تَظَاهَرَ عَلَيْهِ And oh woman, if you all feel that by getting a group, you can get strength. Like you went and you told this one, help me and that one, help me. And that's how girls are. Say the woman's movement. You will see when the women go on marches. Even South Africa who's known as a country that knows how to march. But you haven't seen women marching still. If women go on march, they can demand what they want. They can demand. One of the biggest reasons of the demand is when the woman goes on the march, there's no food left in the house. So all the men will say, whatever you all want, come back home. <laughs> come back home. Men go on march, there's no work in the shops. The government pull three, four, five. Women go on march, one day you'll scream, come back home. You can't do without them. Allah Tawarqullah said, even if you get your jamaat, your click, and you stand up, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ مَوْلَاهُ Then remember by the Nabi of Allah, the message is to the world. That remember for Islam, for Islam number one day is Allah. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ مَوْلَى Allah is there for Nabi. وَجِبْرِيلُ Jibreel is there, alayhi salam. وَصَالِحُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ How many pious people they are. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ An entire army of the angels. So much there is. You not being there is not going to harm anything. عَسَى رَبُّهُ Remember. In talaka kunna, even if the Nabi of Allah has to divorce you, ayyubdilahu azwajan khayram min kunna, so easy for Allah to get a wife better than you for him. Muslimatin, mu'minatin, qanitatin, ta'ibatin, beauty in Arabic is, such women who will be pure Muslim, they were pure, but the message is to the world, don't think you so unique. Just because your name is Zahra. Don't think you're so unique. Because if you die like in Asia, you got your Jannah. But if you die even like the wife of Nuh alayhi salam, you are in Jannah. Pure Muslim, pure Mu'min, qanitatin, obedient to Allah, ta'ibatin, always repenting, abidatin, worshipping Allah in what a manner. See it in the world. When you go to European countries and you see those women, how they perform their salah, you will want to ask her, like, you like grew up in Islam. She'll say, no, I only accepted Islam six months ago. 
But she is not coming out of that sajda. She is making sajda for the last 30 years. Ah, bidatin. What worshippers of Allah? Sa'ihatin, ready to go out in the path of Allah. To travel, to go for jihad, to go for tabligh. She got nothing, my house, my house. She is ready. Thayyibati wa abkara. It could be a non-virgin, it could be a virgin. Allah got it all by him. The message was to the woman of the world, don't ever think you're unique, because in the treasures of Allah, there's a lot that's unique. It is the kindness of Allah, He gave it in a plate. O people of Iman, Ku anfusakum wa ahalikum nara, save yourself and your families from the fire of Jahannam. Wakuduhan nasu wal hijara, beautiful Arabic is. Such a fire that the fuel of the fire, forget being stone. The fuel of the fire is man. Man and woman are the fuel of that fire. So that fire is going to look for its fuel. On that day when Jahannam will be full, brumming, brumming with so many burning, Almighty Allah will say to Jahannam, Halim talati, are you full now? And Jahannam will say, Hal mim mazid, I want more. I want more. At that time, if you wanted to jump, Jahannam will say, I got place for you, come. When you hear this verse, then how Allah is saying, O oh people of Iman, that fuel is man. Man and woman are going to be the fuel of the fire. Save yourself. Alayha malaikatun ghiladun shidadun. On top of that fire will be angels. Severe in nature, hard in nature. They will never disobey Allah. They will do what Allah commands them. When He will say punish, they'll punish. They don't have what is called, it's like you call a robot. Man, you still say he has a certain level of feeling. But the angel in charge of punishment is an angel. If that man burning, screaming, 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 says to the angel, you got no heart. The angel will say, I got no heart. But you were warned about it in the world. Ya ladheena kafaru. Again, beautiful Quran. The women were being scolded. Allah used the wives of Nabi Again it's going to come that, O oh people of Iman, you will not be able to give excuses to Allah. Again Allah changed the, changed the wording. Ya ladheena kafaru. The people of Iman, listen well, on that day we will announce to the kuffar. Again, it's meaning I'm announcing to you all. We will announce to the kuffar, O oh kuffar, la ta'atadhiru al-yawm. Today don't bring me any excuses. You know, Quran, like if you understand what I'm trying to say, the feeling that Allah got for the people of Iman. Allah could have easily said, O oh, people of Iman, today don't give me excuses. But the whole wording says, O oh, people of Kufr, people of Kufr are not being spoken. Say, so that day, how are we going to tell the people of Iman? O oh, people of Kufr, don't bring excuses. Telling the people of Iman, we will have to say that to you also. Innama tujzawna ma kuntum ta'amaloon. Now you will get the punishment of what you have done. And then again, O oh people of Iman, O oh people of Iman, Tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasuha. Now is the time to turn back to Allah. Turn back to Allah. If you were stubborn, there was a chance the Nabi of Allah could divorce you. There's a chance Islam can kick you out. Turn back to Allah. That same Asa comes again. Asa rabbukum. There it was. Asa rabbuhu. Asa Rabbukum ayyukaffira ankum sayyatikum. Turn back to Allah. Whatever mistakes you made, whatever sentences you said, whatever anger you showed to Allah already, Allah said, I'll wipe it all away. Wa yudkhilakum jannatin tajri. He will enter you into gardens under which rivers will flow. On a day, la yukhzillahun nabiyya wal ladheena amanu. On a day where Allah will not be disgracing His Nabi and the people of Iman. Meaning, I don't want to disgrace you. 
On that day, نُورُهُمْ يَسْعَى بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ Light will be in front of them. Light will be on their right hand sides. They will be saying, Oh Allah, أَتْمِمْ لَنَا نُورَنَا Let this light go further. Let it go further. Because we all have to go over the sirat. It will be dark. This light will light up the way. إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah Tawarukullah says, O oh, Nabi, جَاهِدِ الْكُفَّارَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ وَغْلُذْ عَلَيْهِمْ You will have to stand brave against the disbeliever. You will have to stand brave against the hypocrite. Mufassirin write, the disbeliever and the hypocrite is the news that's around us. Their stories that's around us. That in entire system that they have created and forced us inside. You have to stand brave and say, it's not true, I don't believe it. You can't submit to it. And say, boss, whatever you say is like divine revelation. It all makes sense. Again, you're beautiful. Allah never said to me and you stand. He said, oh Nabi, you will have to stand. Meaning if the Nabi himself has to stand brave, then it means me and you, we have to stand brave. Because if you don't oppose it, you will definitely submit to it. If you don't speak against it, you will speak for it. In this world, there's no one neutral. The car has to get pushed. It's only going in one direction. If that girl doesn't know how to defend her Islamic rights, she will then be taught how to defend her ambitions and inner desires, which we call inner cravings. But the inner craving, me and you know we got Lord cravings. But do we fulfill every craving? Every time I come to this town, I know one craving in this town is that all the uncles here want the second. They all got that craving. But every time I come and ask, anyone happens, it can never happen. But that craving is there. Second round. There's no second rounds in this town. If a girl is given a craving, she'll have ten husbands. She'll have ten boyfriends. She'll show her body. She'll become statue of liberty. Lady liberty, I'm free to do with my body. Have you seen those girls who take a picture of their whole body naked? And then they want to send it to their boyfriend. And after the boyfriend leaves them, then they write to the Molana, do you have one Taweez? That somehow that thing can get deleted. Because now he got my picture. They say, he don't need a Taweez to delete it, you need a Taweez for your brains. That how could you send that picture of yours? If a girl is allowed her freedom... There's no limits for her. She'll go diving into Jahannam. Diving. Oh, Nabi of Allah, stand up against the kuffar and the hypocrite, meaning the system, they way. Be hard against them. وَمَعْوَاهُمْ Jahannam. They're going to the fire. What a terrible place you want to go. And then Allah, tawarukala, how he ended the surah. Allah gives the example. لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Of people who fell into kufar. It was the wife of Nuh, it was the wife of Lut. كَانَتَا تَحْتَ عَبْدَيْنِ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا صَالِحِينَ They were under two extremely pious servants of ours. Meaning they were the wives of the Nabi. فَخَانَتَاهُمَا They betrayed their husbands. فَلَمْ يُغْنِيَا عَنْهُمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْعَا Their husbands could not help them against Allah in the least but it was said to them, "Udhkhul an-nar ma'adakhilin." Everyone is jumping in the fire. You wanted it, jump now. Today we're reading it. Do you know when they were told to jump? How many thousands of years ago they were told? At that time, if someone could have said to them, "You know what? Life is only another 25 years, and then either you're going to be in the garden of paradise forever, or in the fire forever." Don't do it. But even if the Nabi told them, those that were stubborn never want to listen. Today when you're reading this, think about this. When did Nabi Nuh salam come in this world? At that time his wife was told, go in the fire. That time. That woman is still burning till today. Jahannam is still coming. Till today she's burning. 
If they could have been someone, they was, it was a husband. But she never wanted to listen. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And Allah gives the example of the people of Iman. It was the wife of Fir'aun. If قَالَتْ Remember when she said, Oh Allah, Bal for me by you a house in paradise. And save me from Fir'aun and his filthy actions. Save me from the oppressors. And how Allah gave it to her. And Allah says, And what about Maryam, the daughter of Imran? Meaning the mother of Isa alayhi salam. She never even got married. Allati ahsanat farjaha. How she looked after her chastity. Because the era we're living in is where the girl says we're in the era of romance. That era of romance, you might not know how your daughters are getting caught up. And perhaps you might be shy to ask them. One town I went to, I spoke about I don't know, pornography, I think. So one uncle was very upset. He said, how can you speak about pornography? My child knows nothing about this. So he called his son and his son's friend and he says, you know about pornography. So the son says, no daddy, no. <laughs> then the son is telling the morana in the town, what my father wanted me to say? I'm going to say, Gigi, I know. <laughs> yeah, how can you ask me such a stupid question? <laughs> how can you ask? <laughs> you know, no, no, I don't know nothing. So the father said, see, I told you why he's speaking about these things. They know all already. They know it. You have to tell them, but there's the fire of Jahannam waiting also. Waiting. The one boy came to me and said, now he's in, madly in love. I said, how you will get these girls? Like, How you will find? Those that want to get married can't find one girl. And you all, they come from the heavens. Like, So he says, no, hey, what are not stories, but like he said, this thing called, what you call it, your status. So he had a nice status. So she saw the status, so she just wrote, Mashallah. For me, it broke my heart. Not because what a romantic story. He said, Allah's name was used to start haram. Mashallah. That's all she had to say, Mashallah. And finished. When I explained it, I said it started with MashaAllah. Then he said, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And how it ended, Inna Lillah. That's how it ended. I said, don't use Allah's name for your haram. Don't use it. They start off with, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Subhanallah. The name of Allah used for haram. But this world of romance, how the surah ended... And remember Maryam, how she looked after her chastity. Ahsanat farjaha. Fanafakhna fihi mir ruhina. Then we blew into her spirit. She became the mother of Isa Isa. But it gave a message to the girls of this world. You look after your chastity, we will make you the mothers of the heroes of tomorrow. We will blow into you spirit. Allah says, we blew into him, Sparat Isa alayhi salam was created. That girl who stays pure in a time of romance, and she got a lot of feeling, a lot of desire, but she fights it and fights it and fights it. Promise of Allah, let her get married into a pure house. She never do anything wrong on the side. Let her become the mother of the child. She'll give birth to the next Salahuddin of the Ummah. She wants her child to be someone. She has to be the Maryam before she can get that. She looked after her chastity. فَنَفَخْنَا فِيهِ We blew spirit into her. وَصَدَّقَتْ بِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّهَا وَكُتُبِهِ وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ What a pious woman she was. How beautiful the surah is. That you can be Aisha also in the best of families. Remember Islam doesn't need any Aisha. How Allah shouted, how much of liking love for the girls of this ummah, that Aisha radiallahu anha was used. And Allah tawarukullah shouted her to say, other girls, I hope you are listening. That when the Nabi is beloved, the beloved of the ummah, beloved of Allah. Aisha radiallahu anha's maqam in the eyes of Allah is beyond understanding. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa would say, you are that wife of mine. That things happen when I'm with you which does not happen anywhere else. 
She says, I was the only one that while Nabi Sallallahu was with me under the same blanket. Meaning when you are very close, even in that condition, Allah would sometimes send wahi. So pure she was. She was known as Siddiqa, the daughter of Siddiq. It was when she was accused of adultery, an entire ruku of Quran came. She said, I knew Allah loved me, but I never knew so much. I thought Jibreel alayhi salam will come and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam will told your wife is innocent. So I never knew Quran will come. But when the girls of the world had to be shouted, Almighty Allah had to say, even if you were an Aisha, don't take your Islam for granted. Because in Islam, it is a favor Islam does to all of us to allow us to be in. Islam does not beg anyone to be in. Who wants to run out? Islam says, not run, the door is there, we'll push out. There are many more ready to come in. May Allah tabarakallah through the barakah of this night, through the barakah of Quran, through the barakah of this entire dars of the entire Quran, may Allah tabarakallah let kufr never enter our families. Let our daughters, our wives, our sisters, let us not be affected by what's happening around us. Let our wives be Asiyas of the era, Maryams of the era. Let them be the mothers of the next Salahuddin's of the era. Wa akhiru da'wana. الحمد لله رب العالمين